Rub up your engines! Big W says, I got a question. I got 2011 Avalon, took it into the shop. They fixed my self-leveling headlights, put snow tires, aligned it. Then when I came in, my stereo presets have disappeared. Is there a reason they disconnected the battery? They were working on your halogen headlamps. You're working on the electrical system. Many guys, when they work on any electrical system, they'll disconnect the battery. And it's a good thing because if somebody screws up while they're working on the car, the electrical system, like even the headlights, something shorts out, it could go and can ruin your computer. You do want to disconnect when you do any kind of electrical work. If you're nuts about your presets, tell your mechanic. And if that's the case, they can plug in a memory saver into your OBD port so that when they disconnect the battery you don't lose the memory to the stereo. If you're real fanatic about it, go right ahead. Tell them, could you put the memory saver on so I don't have to worry about losing my presets and stuff. And they'll do it, right? Some people are fanatics about it, some don't even care. But you obviously care quite a bit about it, so I would say, tell them the next time they work on your car, could they please put a memory saver in? It just plugs into the OBD port so they won't lose it when they're working on the car and take it off because you don't want to go through the hassle. Some cars are real stinkers. You got to reset the sunroof and all kinds of things. If you care about it, just tell the mechanic and he can plug it in so there won't be any memory presets and you won't have any problems with the car because they still will disconnect the battery. Because when you work on electrical systems, it's a good idea to disconnect the battery. I've seen so many things ruined when people don't do that. Mike says... Why won't my 2017 Elantra start? I bought it with 142,000 miles a few months ago. I love it. A few times I go out, the car won't start. I turn the key, I hear a click, the engine won't turn. Happened two days. I don't want to pay a bunch of money for a starter yet. What can I check? I can just about guarantee it's a starter. That's typical. You'll get just a click. If you turn your key and it just clicks, that means that your solenoid is engaging the Bendix drive, click, but the motor isn't turning the engine, the starter motor isn't working. That will happen because your battery's low, you had that checked. There's corrosion, you had that checked, or the starter itself has gone bad. Now, here's something you can do that's a, a decent test. You have somebody turn the key and you hear it click. When they're turning the key, get a piece of wood and a hammer, hit the starter, and you hit it and then it starts to uh, 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 you know the starter's going out. And I can just about guarantee it's a starter going out. That's what happens. The starters have brushes inside, they're brush motors, and the brushes have springs that hold them in. And eventually, as they wear out, the brushes get so thin they don't touch anymore and it will just click. But when you hit it with a hammer, that jolts it so the electricity makes it spin again. So it's a good test. Odds are you just need a starter. That's typical. It's you know five years old and they'll often break down when they're that age. A last Liska says, I got a 2000 Ford Fiesta standard. When I shift into higher gears, the engine stays revved up when I let off the gas. I also have an intermittent dash gear noise. Passenger side, sounds like I need to reprogram the ECU. Where should I go to do this? Well, you don't really need to reprogram it either. You need a clutch. When you're in gear, especially the higher gears, and you shift gears and you step on the gas and it revs up, it means your clutch is slipping. And you're going to need a clutch. Do it correctly. You got to pull off the transmission to do it, so it's a big job. Change all the parts. You get a clutch kit that has all the parts, the throw-out bearing, the clutch plate, the friction disc. You need everything. Buy all the parts. Buy a kit. They have a kit that have all the parts in them. Then you'll get done right, and you don't have to think about it in the future. Because if you just change, let's say, the plate's thin, change the plate, well, pfft. The rest of it's worn too, and it's so expensive to pull the tranny off to do the whole job. You might as well replace the whole kit. Just have that done. Now, noise clutches often make noises when they're worn. You're pushing on them, the springs are worn, the throw out bearing can be worn, you'll hear noises. So just have the clutch replaced. That's what'll fix that. Just a worn out clutch. Nick says. I got an 04 town car. Left front wheel stands a couple inches out of the fender. It has muscle wheels. The right one looks fine. It pulls slightly to the left. Can you tell me what's wrong? It doesn't appear it was an accident. So what could be wrong? The very well might have been an accident if it wasn't fixed right. And the frame has shifted. Yeah, one side's going to stick out more than the other. So have a pro like me or a good body shop to check that out first. Maybe the knucklehead put spacers on them. Sometimes these guys put spacers. Take the front wheels off and look. And if you see the spacers on that side, not on the other, take the spacers off and put it back in the way it's supposed to be. Also realize perhaps he put the wrong size wheel on it. The left wheel may be different than the right wheel. You want to pray it's something like that. Because if it isn't, then it's been in a wreck and somehow it's been shifted to the side. So that one sticks out more. I always tell people, you buy a used car, check the wheels. Make sure they're all the same. Put your finger between the wheel well and the fender and the back. And if you got three fingers on one side and four or five on the other, you know the car's been bent. And that isn't normal. 
pray the guy put the wrong wheel on it or there's a stupid spacer in there that he put on that he forgot to take off because if it's not that odds are it's been in a wreck and it's bent over like that you said it pulls slightly to the one side of course it's going to pull if one sticks out more than the other it's not going to drive correctly that's just common sense and of course look under there my grandson had a toyota the previous guys who owned it it's a tundra they did horrible work and putting a tie rod on the thing we find out that one side the tie rod was screwed in just to a couple of threads it could have fallen off and the other side was screwed in a whole bunch of ways guys just did crap work so you want to have that check to make sure the front end is safe. It's dangerous to have one sitting out. It could be that they just didn't put it together right, too. All right, with Uber and Lyft raising their prices, especially their surge pricing, a lot of the big cities in the United States, people are returning to the original ride-hailing service taxi cabs. In New York City, Yellow Cab was up 116%, over 3 million rides, while Uber and Lyft were down. Same thing in Chicago and San Francisco. Taxi rides are up. Uber and Lyft rides are down. Ridiculous surge pricing. Hey, when people want to use it, they charge more money. The problem is people are stuck between a rock and a hard place, all right? Let's look at it. We got big inflation going on in this country. People driving a Lyft and Ubers, they're not making that much money to begin with. I talked to people in Houston when I was there that drove for them, and one woman even admitted, she said, you know, I figured out what I'm actually making after I take off the price of my car, depreciation, gas, tax, all that. She said, I'm making about minimum wage doing this thing. She was doing it part-time. Everything gets more expensive. You can't live on minimum wage, right? So they're finding ways to raise their rates. Well, eventually, the people who are being squeezed on the other end, the consumer, are going to say, well, this is getting too expensive. Let's try something else. For example, in New York City, the prices of Uber and Lyft in October were 29% higher than they were the year before. And take San Francisco. A ride to the airport to downtown San Francisco was going for 70 to 100 100 bucks on Uber and Lyft, but it was 45 to 50 bucks with a taxi cab. It only makes sense that people are going to start going to a system that doesn't charge as much, especially if they're doing the surge pricing. Oh, everybody's at the airport, so you come from the airport. That whoop surge price, you know? I mean, people are going to figure it out and they'll go someplace else. Maybe the end of Uber and Lyft is a really large thing is starting to come on its way. Basically, the, the business is underpinning the poor people that are driving to take the brunt of the cost where the company skims the cream off the top, right? You know, how long can a system like that work? It's questionable, right? It's questionable. Hey, it's starting to turn a little bit here. They keep raising their prices. People will walk away. You can't force people to pay so much money for something if they can find it cheaper somewhere else. And there's always somebody to fill the space in. Who knows what the new future will be? Who knows? But obviously, it's curtailing their business because they're charging too much money. And they're really getting screwed over. The people driving for Uber and Lyft because with all this inflation, just to break even, they got to make more money. And if they get too expensive, people won't use them. They won't make any money at all. Well, Tesla's at it again. Now they're sending out emails to people, giving the ultimatum to buyers who keep delaying their purchase. You know, they, they had an agreement, say they're going to buy a car, right? And then the price is stuck in, right? Well, of course, a bunch of people, I want to delay it till next year when the tax credit's bigger, right? Notice to all the people that had ordered cars and kept delaying when they're going to get it. You got to put up or shut up. By December 2nd, you either got to get your car or forget it and we'll cancel the deal and you can buy it at a later time. Because if you notice, they keep raising price. Elon keeps raising the price of the Teslas, right? Well, these are contracts that people had to buy one and the price is set in the contract. So, of course, he wants to get more money. So, he's saying, you, you got to pick it by now or you forget it. And, of course, a lot of people that order them, they're thinking, hey, this tax credit is going to be a lot bigger and it will save some of the money. Well, greedy as he is, he just wants to get as much money as possible. And the letter goes, Hi, and that's a buyer's name. We are contacting you to offer you a finer opportunity to take delivery of your car placed on this date. When we contacted you, you requested you delay the order because you still plan to purchase it, but our records indicate you have not taken delivery. If your order ends on hold on December 2nd, 2021, or if your order is placed on hold again, it will be canceled and your deposit will be refunded. We appreciate your understanding. He takes advantage of all the loopholes or stuff, right? Taxes and stuff. If the people buying the cars from him try to, no, 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 no. I got to charge him. Well, you got to take it right now or you're going to have to pay more if you order it again. You know? That's what it comes down to. He keeps raising the price of the vehicles. Contract set in stone. Here's the price you're going to pay, right? So he wants to rip them all up and have new ones unless you do it by December 2nd. He should be happy that anybody's buying these stupid cars if you ask me. It's rather amusing, I have to say. So if you never want to miss another one of my new car repair videos, remember to ring that bell.